Hi, this is Matt, the Game Explainer. Um, today I'm going to be explaining how to play Baseball Highlights 2045. This is a game by uh, designed by Mike Fitzgerald and published by Eagle Griffin Games. Uh, it's a game for one to four players and takes anywhere from about 60 to 90 minutes, depending on how many players you have and um, the, the uh, format that you decide to play. All right, so obviously this is a baseball-themed game. Um, I would say it's you know probably best with one to two players. It is a good solo game, um, but it also obviously plays very well with two. Uh, but there are modes where you can play with three or even four players. And basically, um, the whole kind of idea behind the game, the reason why it's called Baseball Highlights 2045, is in the future, um, in around the year 2031, baseball had almost completely died out. And um, it, it just was considered, you know, too boring. The games were too long. And uh, more of the fans were more interested in, like, American football and other more fast-paced games. So um, what the teams and owners for baseball decided to do was to get some of their uh, key pitchers, star pitchers, and um, outfit them with cyborg arms. So there's a lot of um, cyborgs in the game now that have, like, these cyborg pitching arms. And they're really good at a particular pitch, uh, like curveball, for example. And the cyborg pitchers turned out to be really, really popular with the fans. So it started to bring the fans back to the stadiums. Um, but the problem was, when you had really, really good pitchers, now the hitters really couldn't hit the pitchers as well anymore. So the you know, run production really dropped. So um, the next thing that the teams did is they came up with hitting robots. And these robots... Um, were really good at hitting the cyborg pitchers. So they could, you know, uh, generate a lot of hits, produce a lot of runs, but the robots really weren't that really good at fielding because, you know, fielding just takes a lot more, you know, dexterity and skill than standing at the plate and uh, being able to dial in on a pitch. So um, the team still needed to have good fielders, and that's where natural players would come into play. <clears throat> and these naturals are basically just, you know, human players who are so skilled especially at fielding, that they could still play at the major league level, even with the cyborg pitchers and the robot hitters. So by the year 2045, what you ended up with was three kind of different types of players, cyborg pitchers, robot hitters, and um, naturals, who are, you know, again, uh, more skilled at, field, at fielding. Now, the other thing that baseball did is they shortened the game from nine to six innings. And so that you know, obviously you know, make for quicker games, and, you know, keep the fans, you know, more interested for the entire game. So that's the backstory. That's how you end up kind of with the structure of the game that we have here. So when you actually sit down to play the game, each player is going to take a deck of uh, cards representing one of four basic teams that come in the, in the basic game. And that is um, Boston, New York, San Francisco, and L.A. So each of those team decks has uh, 15 cards comprised of rookies, and um, veterans, okay? So these are kind of unnamed players. You know, they're, they're major leaguers, but they're not the best players out there, okay? But each team will have a deck of 15 cards, and you're going to maintain your deck at exactly 15 cards for the, the entire length of, you know, a session of, of Baseball Highlights 2045. So the whole idea of the game is um, the, the players who are playing against each other are going to... Um, play a series of mini games of baseball. Each mini game will comprise of each player drawing six cards from their deck of cards. This is called your lineup. So you'll draw six cards and then players will take turns playing one card at a time, kind of responding to each other's plays until both players have played six cards. And that will be a game of baseball. So that's why the, you know, shortening it to six innings, because you're playing six cards. And so, as you can imagine, the reason it's called Baseball Highlights is that, you know, each player playing those six cards, it's kind of like uh, going back and looking at a highlight reel for a particular game of baseball. So you're not going to, you know, uh, do every pitch, every hit, every, you know, running of the bases, every, you know, fielding play. You're just catching the highlights, okay? Um, and so it kind of boils the game down to just really the key um, important, you know, things that go on to make an exciting game of baseball. And um, so that's the whole idea of the game. Now, um, in a typical game, let's say you're, you know, set up here for two players, um, the typical uh, format for playing the game is that, um, the two players, first they'll play a three-game miniseries, okay? Um, and the whole purpose of that 
uh, three-game miniseries is it's going to allow players after the end of each game of baseball to draft some of these free agents that are over here, okay? And um, so you'll start to swap out some of your rookies and veterans for some better players, some of these free agents. And then after those first three games, whichever player won two or more of those games um, will be able to be the home team uh, at the start of the World Series. And then the two players, once they've played the first three mini games, then they'll go right into a seven game uh, World Series. And just like the typical, you know, World Series um, matchup, the first team to get four wins will win the World Series and obviously win the game of, of Baseball Highlights 2045. Now, at the end of each of those mini games, though, even at the end of each game of the World Series, players will have an opportunity to buy more free agents. So it's really, you know, a deck building game, right? You're starting with 15 basic cards and over the course of anywhere from uh, seven to 10, you know, mini games of baseball, you will be um, swapping out your basic cards for better cards and improving your team. Now, the base game comes with, um, like I said, the four um, kind of starting decks and then 60 of these free agent cards. So as you can imagine, you know, you're only going to be buying eh, maybe 9 to 12, you know, 8 to 12 um, free agents over the course of one, you know, game or one, you know, series of, of uh, Baseball Highlight 2045. So each time you play the game, you're going to see, um, you know, a lot of different uh, free agents. So there's a lot of replayability in this game. You can also choose to kind of build your team different ways, depending on what kind of strategies you want to employ and also what different, you know, players your opponent is um, adding into his team. So if your opponent, for example, is adding a lot of robots into his team to get a lot of offense, then maybe you want to add more cyborgs into your team because the cyborgs are, are you know, good um, in many cases at uh, getting the robots to strike out. So there's a lot of kind of, you know, strategy in, in, in terms of paying attention to what your opponent is doing and then reacting accordingly. All right, so let me go ahead and explain kind of, you know, what is set up here. Each player will have one of these um, player boards uh, where they'll kind of keep track of all of their stuff. Like I said, your your 15-card uh, team will be in the lineup. It will start here in the lineup spot, and that's where you'll draw your six cards each time you're ready to start a mini game. Um, well, as you discard cards, they go into the dugout. Um, as you play cards during the game, your, the six cards that you play will go into this in-play stack. And then, of course, um, you know, you've got the bases here for, you know, keeping track of runners, uh, runs scored during the game. And then, of course, how many games you've won in the current series. There's also an on-deck circle here where you can kind of keep another card in reserve to potentially use during a game. So I'll explain how the on-deck works in, in, a, in a little bit. But so each player will have one of those, and typically they'll be you know, facing each other. So this top board typically will be rotated, but I have it facing the camera just you know for ease of the video. And then of course off to the side here, um, again you, you can have it you know facing the boards or however you want. But there'll be six face-up uh, free agent cards, and then the free agent draw pile. Then you also get a whole bunch of these uh, wooden uh, pawns here. Uh, these represent the different types of runners in the game. Uh, white are slow runners. Blue are average runners, and the red guys are the fast runners. And you'll see how those, you know, uh, come into play as well. So that's really the setup of the game. It's very, very simple setup. And um, so, like I said, at the start of the first game, um, each player will draw six cards from the top of their deck. So I've got here the first six cards for Boston in this case. Now, um, the first thing each team has to do before you start playing your cards is um, each team has to decide if they want to place one of these six cards into the on-deck circle. Now, why would you do that? Well, uh, again, you're kind of placing a card in reserve that then you can potentially bring in during the game or at the very end of the game. And you'll notice some of the cards at the bottom here have this PH symbol, okay? Uh, this PH stands for pinch hitter. And so anytime... If you do have a card, let's say I want to place um, this card here in the on-deck circle, then what I would do is I would draw another card to replace it so I still have six cards in hand at the start of the game. Now, if, I, if during the game 
rather than playing one of the cards from my hand, instead if I want to play this card from the on-deck circle, then I have to discard to the dugout one of my pinch hit cards. These are the only players that can um, sit out or be a pin, you know, uh, basically allow a pinch hitter to come in. So I could, for example, uh, take um, this card here, all right, I could discard it, and then instead bring in this card and, and play it as my next card, okay? So that's the whole point of the on-deck circle. Um, and as you can imagine, there's going to be different strategies depending on if you're the visitor player or the home player. Because the way this game works, each mini game, one player will be the visitor and the other player will be the home. So for this first game, I've chosen Boston to be the visitor and uh, New York to be the home team. What that determines is who's going to play the first card, right, which is always the visitor, because just like in a basic game of baseball, the visitors get to hit first, right? And then, um, of course, that means that the home team is going to be able to play the last card of the game. However, because um, that's kind of obviously an advantage for the home team to be able to play that last card and maybe get that last big hit, what can happen, or what's a, you know, there's a rule in the game called the visitor save. And that is at the very end of the game, and I'll show you how this works, after the home team plays his last card, if the, car, if the hits that would be on that card would cause the home team to pull out the win. So maybe the home team is losing or is at best going to tie. But by playing that last card, the home team is going to get the win. Well, then what the visitor can do is, again, if he has a card either in the on-deck circle, or if he doesn't, he can just blindly draw the top card from his uh, lineup deck. And what he's looking for is a defensive ability that would somehow you know, negate or weaken um, the hits that the home team is getting on his last card. And hopefully that would allow the visitor to save the game. So it's called a visitor save. All right? So that's one reason why like the visiting team might want to have a nice defensive card here in the on-deck circle. Um, for example, this box here, this box is called the immediate action box. And whenever you play a card, you first resolve its immediate action. And as you can see here, this says glove, cancel one hit. So as the visiting team, you know, I might want to have this card in my on-deck circle. So that way, at the very end of the game, if I was going to win, but then the home team maybe tries to hit a walk-off home run to win the game, well, now I know that I have the ability to cancel a hit by playing my on-deck card as my visitor save. Now, the home team, he might want to put a card in his on-deck circle, but maybe he wants to put a little extra offense there. Or maybe he wants to put some you know, specialized defense there. So there's a lot of different options for what card you put into your on-deck circle and then how you decide you want to use it during the game. Okay, so that's the startup, okay? So um, let's say, um, yeah, I'll put this glove cancel one hit card into my on-deck circle because it has no hits in the hit box, right? So I'm not giving up any offense by putting it there. And now I'm going to keep, you know, these other six cards um, to play for the game. And of course, the home team, he's going to do the same. He's going to draw six cards and uh, he's going to look at those cards and go, well, maybe I will put, let's see, do I have any pinch hitters? I have one. Um, so maybe he decides he's not going to put anybody in the on-deck circle. He's just going to go ahead and play with these six cards that he has. All right, so the way the game goes, the, again, the visiting team plays first. So he's going to take one card and decide which, you know, which card he wants to play. Now, like I said, the first thing when you play a card is you have to resolve the immediate action box. But most of these immediate action boxes are either defensive. Some of them are, involve offense. In this case, he doesn't have any offensive ones. He just has defensive ones, which are the red ones. So he's just going to go ahead and say, you know what? I'm going to start off by um, playing this card. Okay. It's a robot, it has no immediate action, and it's going to threaten a double, okay? So any hits that are listed in this box are called threatened hits when you, put the pl when you play the card. And down here at the bottom, it's going to show you the type of runner that this card uh, generates, whether it's slow, you know, which is white, average, which is blue, or fast, which is red. So this guy actually is going to threaten a hit, a double, with a fast runner, all right? So that's, that's a pretty good start, pretty strong start, so I'm going to play that down. Now, because there's no immediate action, I don't have to do that. All I'm going to do is take a red pawn, and I'm going to place it here at home plate because it's a threatened hit. The hit hasn't actually happened yet. What's going to happen is the opposing player, 
gets an opportunity to respond to those threatened hits and maybe somehow alter them by playing his card. So now we're going to go back to the uh, the Yankees here, the dreaded Yankees, and they're going to um, see what they can do. So he's got a card here, a uh, double play. He can remove up to two base runners, but that's not really that helpful right now because uh, there are no base runners for the you know the opposing player. He's got some regular hits. Um, oh, he's got this guy, quick eye. He can hit an extra single if he's um, going against a cyborg, but right now there's a robot out in play, so that's no good. Um, this guy has a fastball. It'll cancel all hits versus a natural, but again, he's facing a robot, so that doesn't really help. So he doesn't really have a way to affect that double. So instead, what he's going to do, maybe he'll just say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and play this robot here. This robot actually allows me to threaten two hits, single and then single, but they're slow runners. So he's going to go ahead and play that card. Okay. Now, if he had an immediate action, it would resolve, but he does not. So now you resolve these threatened hits. So boom, he gets a double. He goes right to second base. Now, this guy, you have to place his threatened hitters. He's got two singles with slow runners. So you're going to put two white pawns out there at home plate. Now it comes back to the Boston player. All right? So let's see what he can do. Um, maybe he says, well, you know what? I'm going to play this card. It's a it has a glove ability, which will cancel one hit. And then he threatens a triple with a slow runner. So he's a natural. Okay, So he's going to go ahead and play that. Now, the first thing he does, he resolves the immediate ability, which is um, cancel one hit. So he gets to choose which of these two hits he wants to cancel. But in this case, they're both singles, so it doesn't matter. So one of them will come off, and then the other one will get resolved. Now he, um, the home team has a, a runner at first base. And now, again, he's going to threaten a triple with a slow runner. So he puts that guy at home plate. Now it goes back to New York. So you can kind of see how it goes back and forth, right? So now um, New York might say, okay, mister, I've got, I got my cyborg here who's got this awesome fastball. He can cancel all hits versus a natural. Well, guess what? I've got, this guy's got a natural out right now, right? So I'm going to cancel all those hits and then threaten my own single with an average runner. So I'll play that card. I immediately trigger the fastball. So that cancels this triple. Never happened. And now I get to threaten my own single with an average uh, blue runner in this case. And so I'm not going to play out the whole game, you know, to try not to make the video too long. But um, basically, again, players will continue to go back and forth until they've both played six cards. All right. Now, let me give you an example. Let me just kind of play some pawns out here. Uh, let's say... Um, you know, let's say that, uh, again, the uh, all the cards have been played except for the um, last card from the home team, all right? And let's say that last card is this robot who's going to threaten a triple, right? So let's put it out there. And let's say um, at this point, the visiting team has four runs and the home team has two runs, okay? Actually, let's say three runs. So the game is four to three. We're down at the bottom of the sixth inning, which is the last inning, and he's threatening a triple. Now, obviously, if he hits a triple and there's two guys on base, that's going to score two runs, right? Which would have the home team win the game five to four, because right now he's he's down by two runs, or sorry, he's down by one run, and so if he scores two runs, he'll win five to four. So this is where the visitor save can come into play. Obviously, the visitor looks at that and goes, "Oh man, he's going to he's going to do a triple." I need to somehow stop him from winning the game. So I can either play this card for my on-deck circle, or if I know that it's not going to work, I can just draw blindly from the top of my deck. But, hey, I know that at the start of the game, I put this natural here who's got a glove ability to cancel one hit. So I'm going to play this card. Now, when you play it as a visitor save, you only trigger the immediate action um, if it's a defensive ability, which in this case it is. So he would play this card. Now, he doesn't play it into the middle, and I'll explain why in just a second. Instead, he plays it and puts it immediately in the dugout or discard pile. But he triggers the glove ability that cancels this hit, and voila, the visitor has saved the game, and he wins the game 4-3. to three. All right? So that's the end of a game of, of, of uh, baseball. Um, you mark off who won the game, in this case, the visitor, right? 
Now, at this point, we enter into what's called the buy phase. And in the buy phase, each player will have the option or the ability to buy some of these free agents. And remember, when you buy free agents, you're going to then remove one player from your starting deck for each free agent that you buy. So it's a way to improve your deck, right? So the way you the way that you figure out what you can buy is you're going to add up all of the numbers in the green circles here on, on the, the, the six cards that you played during the game. And you're not going to count any extra card that you played from for the visitor save, for example. Only the six cards that you played. Now, if the game did go to extra innings, so if they were tied at the end of both players playing six cards, then there is a rule for how you do extra innings in the game. Both players basically draw three more cards from their lineup deck and then play the two card play each player plays a, a card simultaneously and then reveals them simultaneously excuse me and um, you resolve those cards there's a there's a process for it i won't explain all of it here but basically players keep playing kind of one card at a time simultaneously until somebody ends up with more runs than the other player and then that player has won in extra innings if a game does go to extra innings, then you get to use any cards that you actually played during extra innings during the buy phase. So it is a way to buy better players uh, if the game goes longer. Okay, so anyway, you add up the green circles. So he's got one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So he's got nine money, if you will, nine million dollars, nine whatever you want to call it. But he's got nine um, money to purchase free agents. And let's see New York. New York has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, they both have nine. Okay. So here's how this works. <clears throat> if one player had less money than the other, then the player with less money would be able to decide which player buys first. Okay. And why wouldn't you always want to buy first? Well, sometimes depending on the selection of free agents that are out here, and you can only buy from the six that are face up, there may not be a player that has the right price or the right abilities that you're looking for. So even though you might have the option of buying first, you might want to let the other player buy first because when they buy some cards, as soon as a free agent is purchased, one will be drawn to replace it. And maybe a better free agent will come out that you know will be better for your team. So sometimes you want to buy first and sometimes you don't. But in this case, um, like I said, the, the player with the less money has that choice, who buys first. Because both players have exactly the same amount of money, then the player that lost the mini game, in this case New York, they have again the choice to decide who buys first. So New York is going to take a look at the free agents, and um, basically the free agents. The main difference between them and the the base cards, um, they have some um, you know they may have some different abilities. They're typically a little better, right? A little better mix of hits and offense and defense, and uh, being able to be pinch hitters, maybe some faster runners. Um, but they also have this uh, red diamond on them. And the red diamond shows how much it costs to buy this free agent and add them to your team. Now, the funny thing about all the free agents, they, they combined uh, the first name from one real player with the last name from another real player um, to, to make some so, sometimes some funny uh, combinations. Um, and then the robots just have robot names, you know, like Bat90 or TurtleBot or whatever, uh, Boomer number three. So um, anyway, um, let's say the the uh, Yankee player looks at the free agents and let's say he goes, hmm, who do I want to buy? And he can buy more than one player if he has enough money. So, for example, this bat 90 costs four and the um, this other guy here costs five. So he could buy them both for nine if he wanted to. And you can buy them one at a time to wait to see what else comes out. But let's say, you know what, just for, for kicks, he's going to buy this cyborg, uh, Juan Spahn. And he costs eight, and of course he has nine, so he has enough to buy it. Uh, he will generate two revenue when he's played in a game, so that's not bad. That's one thing you have to keep in mind when you play this game is how much revenue each of your free agents is going to generate. Because if you buy a lot of free agents early on that don't generate much revenue, like a lot of the robots, for some reason they're not fan favorites. So like this robot only generates zero, this robot generates one. So if you buy a lot of robots early on, then you may not have as much money later in some of the later games to buy you know, some of the better players. Whereas uh, some of the naturals, especially, they can be worth a lot of money. Like this natural here, he only costs five, and he's going to generate you four bucks every time you use them in a game. So that's pretty good. 
but you know he's a defensive guy and he's got no hits so you know you know you kind of have to look at the trade-offs there but anyway he's going to buy Juan Spahn he's got a nice curveball cancel all hits versus a robot and he also threatens a double and a single with average runner so that's pretty good now when you buy a free agent you're going to put him right on the top of your lineup so he'll be available in the next mini game that you play and then you have to take one of the six players that you use during that mini game and put them into the minor leagues, which is right up at the top of your card here. The minor leagues is just a place to hold all the cards that you've um, culled out of your deck so you don't have to use them anymore. So maybe he's going to say, well, uh, you know, maybe I'll get rid of somebody that's uh, kind of cheap, like this robot. He only gets me one income. He gets me a couple singles, but they're slow runners. Maybe I'll send him to the minors. So bye-bye, bro- robot. We'll see you later. And then the rest of these cards that um, you used in the last game will go to the dugout. Now, when he's ready to play the next game, he'll just draw the top six cards and, and get ready to go. Now, we'll draw a card to replace the card that got purchased. Oh, here we have Hoyt Negro. He's a cyborg, obviously a pitcher. And, of course, he's got the knuckleball. Uh, costs five, generates two, and he's got a single, and he can pinch hit. Or it can be pinch hit four. So... Now, these are the six cards available for Boston to select from. Again, Boston has uh, nine bucks. And just to show you something different, maybe he'll buy the Bat 90, which has a quick eye, um, which is nice. He'll get a, a f- extra single immediately if he uh, goes up against a cyborg and he gets to threaten a home run. So that's pretty cool. So he'll buy him for four. And then we replace him. Oh, got Speedo 42, cost six. So now Boston still has five bucks to spend. And maybe he'll say, yeah, you know what? I like this Hoyt Negro guy. I'm going to spend my other five to get him. So I'll add him there. Now, because he bought two free agents, and we'll have to replace here, um, he has to take two of these cards and send them to the minor leagues. So maybe, you know, he'll get rid of this one cyborg because he just bought another one. And this guy doesn't generate any hits. So we'll get rid of him. And, um, yeah, maybe he'll also get rid of this robot which has got single, single. So he'll send those to the minors. And then the rest of these will go, obviously, into the um, dugout or discard pile. And now, um, you know, they reset the board. Uh, and the teams will be ready to play the next mini game of baseball. Now, when you play the first three games, again, just to kind of build up your team and determine home field advantage for the World Series, you alternate being the visitor in the home, right? So he would flip over to the home team. He would flip to the visitor team. Now they would draw their next set of cards and they play the next game. It's that simple. So the rules are really, really simple. Um, And also each player can have one of these player aid cards um, that shows you, um, you know, kind of the the turn summary and um, the base running rules, as well as all the different um, immediate actions that are on the different cards. But I mean, they're also explained right on the cards for the most part. So you really just have to read the cards. It's really simple. And then after the players finish playing the first three games, they'll go right into the World Series. Um, first team to win four games in the World Series will win the overall game of, of baseball highlights. Um, but after each game in the World Series, players will still have that buy phase. So you'll be continuously you know, improving your team throughout the whole game, which is kind of nice. Now, the other thing I didn't explain are the base runners. What's the difference between the speeds of the base runners? Okay, let me let me show you an example. Um, normally, each base runner, if they're um, white or blue, they will advance one base for each base that is um, the hit. Okay, so for example, if you had like a blue base runner on first, and um, let's say this white um, hitter is getting a single, well, then the blue guy, because the, this the hit is a single, he'll advance one base. Okay. However, if the blue base runner was already on second and a single is being hit, the blue base runner will actually score all the way from second on a single. So that's that's the difference. Whereas if you had the white runner, the slow runner, on second, and the blue hitter or any hitter was hitting a single, then he only advances one base. So in summary, the white base runners always advance exactly the number of bases equal to the hit, whereas the blue base runner can score from second on a single. All right. So what about the red guys? All right. Well, the red guys... Um, they always go advance one extra base when they're on base um, beyond what the hit is. So in this case, again, if, if the hit was a single and you had a red guy at first, he would advance two bases on a single and, of course, three bases on a double. So he'd score on a double or a triple. So that's the nice thing about the, the red base runners. They're very fast. 
<clears throat> so that's really the difference between the base runners. Um, also, I should let you know that there are a number of um, mini expansions that are also available for the game. And those mini expansions basically give you like another deck of naturals, another deck of cyborgs, and another deck of robots that you can mix into your free agent deck and therefore have more variety of free agents. They also come with some new abilities that don't come in the base game. Um, some of those new abilities would be like um, having a closer ability. So if you're ahead, he can cancel all hits versus any player. That's pretty cool. There's this rally ability, which more deals with getting extra offense if you're behind. Uh, there's a teamwork ability. You know, so if you have multiple players from this, of the same type, like multiple naturals or multiple you know robots, they can work together. A magna glove is like a special glove that will cancel two hits instead of one. Things like that. So there's some neat new abilities in those expansion decks uh, to give you even more variety every time you play the game. Uh, one final expansion, which is really different, is um, the coach's expansion. Okay, and this gives you, um, I think it's like 15 cards. And um, the way that the coach's expansion works is at the start of the World Series, so not in the early games, but just in the at the start of the seven-game World Series, um, the, before they draw their first um, team, uh, you know, set of team cards, the uh, players will first be dealt uh, four coach cards each, and then each player will there'll be a draft, you know, a four-card draft for the coaches. So you're going to look at your four coaches that you're first dealt. You're going to keep one of them, and then you're going to pass the other three to the other player. He'll take those three, and you'll get three from him, and, of course, you'll select one of those three to keep and pass the other two back and so on until every, everybody now has you know four cards that they've drafted, four coaches. Then at the start of each of the World Series games, the home team can, after drawing their their you know their team for that game, but before playing the first card, they can decide if they want to play a coach. And if they do, they play the coach face up, you know, next to their um, board like that. Now, if once the oh, there's the home team right here. <laughs> now, um, once the home team has decided whether or not to play a coach, now the visiting team has the same decision. Does he want to play a coach or not? So once both teams have decided to play a coach or not, then you go ahead and play the game. But now each of these coaches will have some sort of a special ability for either for during or after the game. So, for example, this guy has a fan favorite ability. You get to add five revenue to your buy uh, players phase. So he doesn't do anything during the game, but then after the game, when you're buying free agents, you get to add an extra five bucks to your total. So you might be able to get a really super nice player or a couple of really decent players. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of a nice card to play when you don't have as much income. Um, you can have... Uh, you know, different players like, uh, let's see, like this guy, uh, triple play, remove up to three base runners, and fast runners can be removed. Whereas often, you know, like with a double play ability, you can't remove fast runners. So this guy's pretty powerful. He can really clear the bases, um, you know, in, in a situation. But these kind of abilities, you know, like the defensive ones or the offensive ones, they typically can only be used once during the game. So that ability is face up, right? Your opponent knows that you have it, but it's up to you to decide if and when you want to use it during the game. Now, whether you use the coach or not during the game, that coach is going to be discarded out of the game, and so you only have four coaches for a seven-game series. So you have to kind of decide, you know, when it makes sense for you to use the coach. So anyway, that's the coach's expansion. Again, that doesn't come in the base game, but it is a really nice, you know, uh, kind of additional strategic option if you want to add a little more depth to the game. Um, so that's it. That's, that's pretty much the game. Um, again, it can be played with uh, one to four players. Um, I find it to be just an incredible amount of fun, and it really gives you that feel of baseball. So if that sounds interesting to you, hopefully you'll be able to go check it out. Uh, again, this is Matt, the Game Explainer, and you've just seen Baseball Highlights 2045. Thanks for watching.